Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is second lecture from respiration unit. In this lecture, we will discuss the pressures, all those pressures which cause the entry of air into the lung. How the lung, how the air enter into the lungs, which pressures are responsible for this. So let's come toward this. Lungs float in a thoracic cavity surrounded by thin pleural fluid that lubricate lung. Lung is just floating in a thoracic cavity surrounded by the parietal pleura, uh, visceral pleura and parietal pleura between the, the space filled with the fluid. So it is lubricated by that parietal, that pleural fluid. And there is a continuous suction of the excess fluid which generates in this pleura. So this continuous suction creates a negative pressure. Continuous suction of the excess fluid to the lymphatic create a slight suction between visceral and what? Parietal surface of the thoracic cavity. So now come towards the pleural pressure. That how pleural pressure develops. Pleura is a membrane which surrounds the lungs. So there is a pressure called pleural pressure. How this pressure creates? Pleural pressure is a pressure of fluid in the thin space between lung pleura and chest wall. This pressure is negative due to the suction. If I draw here the lungs, suppose these are the lungs, and this is a parietal pleura, the chest wall. So this pressure is present here. This parietal, this one, this pleural pressure is present here and it is a negative pressure due to suction of excess fluid by the uh, lymphatic system. So what is the normal value of this pleural pressure? The normal value of pleural pressure is minus 5 cm of water. Minus 5 cm of water. During inspiration, expansion of chest cage, pull lung outward with greater force and create more negativity. When we inspire, we pull our chest cage outward. This pull the lung outward with great force and create this more negative. So it reaches to the 7.5 cm of water. Normally it is minus 5 cm of water. Next is alveolar pressure. Inside alveolar, alveolar pressure, what is alveolar, alveolar pressure? The pressure which is present inside the alveoli is called alveolar pressure. When the glottis is open, Glottis, when the glottis is open and air go inside and outside of the lungs, so this pressure is zero. Then the alveolar pressure is zero. Normally, normally when we inspire, we pull the air inside. This pressure during normal inspiration is minus one centimeter of water. When this pressure becomes negative, minus one centimeter of water from zero, it comes to the negative. It sucks the air from outside. So it pulls 0.5 liter of the air into the lung. If this pressure relates to plus 1 from minus 1, then what will happen? It forces out because then the positive pressure creates. When we just keep in mind when negative pressure creates, it sucks the air. When positive pressure creates, suppose this is if I compressing something, so I am applying a positive pressure. So this will be called expulsion of air. So the air force out the air. The next is transpulmonary pressure, also called required pressure. What is transpulmonary pressure? I in a little moment I will discuss this. But now be with me. The difference between alveolar pressure and partial pressure is called transpulmonary pressure. Now come toward the transpulmonary pressure. What is the transpulmonary pressure? The difference between alveolar pressure and pleural pressure. This is called transpulmonary pressure. It is the measure of elastic forces of the lung. They tend to collapse the lung. Also called required pressure. As I told earlier that the transpulmonary pressure is also called required pressure. Mean how much is the required of the lung to contract? It is the required pressure. How we obtain this transpulmonary pressure? If you can see here, this is the alveolar pressure. What is alveolar pressure? The pressure inside the alveoli is called alveolar pressure. When the glottis is open and the ear is neither moving in and outside, this pressure is zero. 
when we start inspiration look to this diagram here when we start inspiration this curve start going downward it come toward minus 1 and when it become minus we suck the air of 0.5 liters from the outside again when we start expiration this go toward the positive side mean 12 plus 0 so this is a real air pressure the other thing this is a pleural pressure what is the pleural pressure the pressure between the parietal pleura and the chest wall there is a negative suction pressure not only this pressure is minus 5 centimeter of water now when we start inspiring this pressure come toward minus 7.5 or 8 centimeter of water you can see here this come from minus 5 toward the minus 8 or minus 7.5 you can say during inspiration again during expiration it goes upward again it comes toward the 5 so this is pure pressure so the difference between these two pressure is called transpulmonary pressure transpulmonary pressure actually show the compliance of the lung it's a, a required pressure it how much required is present in the lung mean now come to our, first I'm going to tell you about the compliance a little bit what is compliance of the lung the extent to which the lung expand with each unit increase in transpulmonary pressure as we increase transpulmonary pressure the compliance mean the the lung will expand more so there will be more required mean the lung will deflate with more strength mean the required will be more so this is compliance of the lung as you can see here in this data i'm going to i'm going to give you an example of balloon if we are start filling the balloon with air it's stretching out a point will reach that it will burst out because its compliance will be it will be because we will cross the compliance level of dead balloon in the same way the lung also have a compliance in the range of compliance it also have a required force which is a transpulmonary pressure so the extent to which the lung expand with each unit increase in transpulmonary pressure this is a compliance diagram it is called inspiration compliance curve and this is called expiration compliance curve if you can see here as we during inspiration as we increase the pressure the pleural pressure or transpulmonary you can say transpulmonary pressure the volume we creating a negative pressure so we thus we achieve a air inside to the lung this is called inspiration compliance in opposite if we start decreasing this pressure if we start from here 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 it means we decreasing the pressure so we losing the air at this point we came with zero zero liter of air so this is expiration compliance this is inspiration compliance so this compliance means this required capacity of the lung is due to what this elasticity mean in compliance you simply can say that it is the elasticity of the lung due to which it expands so the compliance of the lung is due to elastic forces of the lung tissue there are elastic forces in the lung tissue everything which stretch out having an elasticity elastic forces caused by surface tension of fluid lining inside of the alveoli and elastic forces of lung tissue this compliance is because of the lung tissue having own elasticity and also there are fluids which line the inside of alveoli so they create a surface tension there and they tend to contract the alveoli this is also an elastic force and it it adds to the compliance of lung so elastic force of lung tissue is due to mainly elastin and collagen fiber network it it is due to the mainly elastin and collagen fiber network so keep this in mind this is important for this mcq elastin and collagen fiber